limited capabilities of still existing. We need to band together. We need to take care of each other. We need to be friendly That's to That's presupposing another. that survival is a good thing. Why is it a good thing? And why us surviving? Why not roaches? Or antelope? Or black widow spiders? Hi, hi, hi. Today we are watching another video where this atheist, as he was arguing, realized that maybe there is a God. Check this out. So you make three specific arguments for the existence of God. A creative argument, an argument for design, and an argument for morality. Yeah. I first off would like to try and take down the argument on morality. Go ahead. Okay. Because it's not actually an argument for the existence of a God. It's the argument for the fact that we should have an idea of an existence of a God. Because otherwise there would be no moral basis from which we could sit on. And I disagree with that because I feel that humans are inherently altruistic and moral. Okay, all right. So stop there for just a second, Nathaniel. What do you mean by altruistic and moral? We are giving and we care about each other. Why is that good? Why is that good? Because it helps our species survive. Why is it good to survive? Because then we can propagate and move on as a species and continue to exist. So why is that a good thing? Who said? Why is that a good thing? Yeah. Because that is what it is. Well, that's an is. That's not an ought, though. Stalin would say, fine, Nathaniel, I'm going to survive by killing you and taking your stuff. Why is he wrong? Because Stalin would have the initial urge not to. He would feel that the inherent urge of humans is to be caring for one another. There are situations where humans will not be caring about one another, and those are exceptional. But because humans are inherently altruistic, his first urge would be to take care of the person or try and help them. But if he has some motivation against that, then he would no longer have that urge, and he would decide that he wants to kill them because he has a reason to. Well, again, you're, I think you're begging the question as to what altruism is. Why is yes. taking care of others a good thing if there is no God? That's your opinion. Is there an external referent, an authoritative, mm. unchanging referent that you're getting that opinion from, which makes it yeah. objective, or is it just something you feel? Um, so if you take it from the stance that this is something that is consistent throughout humanity, that we care about one another, then we could s superpose that as a moral impulse that we have. Okay, let me agree with you. I think we do have a moral impulse. And that's exactly what C.S. Lewis said in The Abolition of Man, when he looked at all the diverse cultures and he said, they agree on basic morality. Now, how do you mm. explain that basic morality? Well, there's maybe different ways to explain it, but some will say that's because God has written it on our hearts. But the issue isn't how we know it. The issue is why is altruism, as you put it, or caring for one another a good thing? Who mm. said? It's not necessarily that who said, it is what is. We are altruistic. There is no need for someone to say that it is a good thing. It is what we are. But if Hitler or Stalin comes along and says, I don't want to be altruistic, I want to be selfish and take everything for myself, and if I have to kill you to do that, I'm going to do that, why is that objectively wrong? Because he's not taking care of other people. Who said it's... Why? Where are you getting this standard to objective... This objective standard that you ought to take care of people? Where does that come from if there's no God? So I'm just going to talk about a little example that I know of and some others. So um, there's three different points I'd like to make. First off, we still exist. If we did not take care of each other as a social species, we would have very, very limited capabilities of still existing. We need to band together. We need to take care of each other. We need to be friendly That's to one That's presupposing another. that survival is a good thing. Why is it a good thing? And why us surviving? Why not roaches? Or antelope? Or yeah. black widow spiders. Why do you need the concept of good there? We're still surviving and we're being nice, kind to each other. We're being caring for one another. Is, wouldn't... Forgive me, Nathaniel, but you're stealing the from standard God. of goodness from God's universe mm. to try and make your worldview work. But mm -hmm. if there is no objective, authoritative, moral standard beyond us, then atheism doesn't work. You know, I think you're right. There is something to that. Ooh, ooh. I love that ending. Ooh. Nothing is as sweet <laughs> than when they begin to see that, oh my God, I think something is wrong. You see, I argue a lot of, with um, atheists and Muslims sometimes online. And I, one of the things I see about atheists is that it's almost very difficult to get them to this point. Because it's not like many of them are not looking for truth. Many of them have made up their mind. There is a kind of atheist that it's not as if they don't know that there's a God, but they just hate God. And because they hate God, they interpret their hatred of God to become a an absence of God. So they hate that, okay, there's a God and they're still suffering in the world. They hate to think that, okay, there's a God and maybe my mom died or my brother died. They hate that idea. But when you confront them and say, okay, now that we are here, tell me why you say that there's no God. Usually, they will not be able to. And it's very rare to see a case like this where his brother was said, because I believe that that brother will eventually find his way to Jesus Christ. We say that, okay, I, I, I see what you are saying. There's possibly something there. I see how this can connect or that can connect. 
one of the things i urge a lot of people to do when you are looking at things like maybe if you're an atheist listening to me or you're an agnostic listening to me just take your time look at it though don't take all the time because <laughs> rapture is a serious thing but take your time still look at the evidence for christ check it out for yourself i mean take your time and scrutinize it you will first of all see one of the first things you will see is that among all the religion there's none that has as much a record as christianity the new testament is full with abundant manuscripts forget all those people that like to talk as if hey, there's no check it yourself you will see that there is no historical event as documented as new test as the new testament every other person that they set in stone they they spoke about the socrates spoke about all these people they don't even have they have nothing but the bible is so loaded so loaded is accurate historically is accurate spiritually spiritually left to me i would not argue many of these angles that would call me maybe the historical argument or the the other argument i would have just said you know what let's go spiritual because you see a lot of things that are happening is that a lot of people are asking this your god that you claim where is he where is he show me an example of this god and just like elijah will say if our god be god let fire fall from the sky <laughs> That is one of the ways the Antichrist is going to deceive many people. The beast is going to bring fire, bring miracles that make many people think that there is no good. So, just as this young man was able...